Welcome to You Can Do It. I'm your host, Chris, and in this episode, we're going to be leveling up a 36 by 12 outdoor building. It's kind of like a tough shed. Uh, this client wants to turn this into a tiny house, um, and when they delivered it, the ground wasn't level, and they set some blocks up, but they didn't do any permanent concrete work. Um, so the building is now five and a half inches at a level. And so we're going to go inside, set up a level, and we're going to figure out what we need to do as far as leveling up this building so we can turn this thing into a house. Stay tuned, and we'll show you how you can do it. All right, so we set up our tripod here. We got a laser level. It does vertical and horizontal. Um, so we've just got a constant green line set up in the, in the building here, and we've gone around. Uh, this is the highest point of the building here and we've gone through and we've measured that the height of where we're at right here compared to all the other corners of the building and the, the lowest point is over there it's five and a half so we're going to go outside and we're going to begin slowly jacking up the building in certain places with a, with the hydraulic jack and we're going to shim it um, and then we're going to actually pour concrete and put some permanent uh, uh, house jacks in so we'll show you how that's going to be done as well so let's go ahead and head outside and begin lifting the building with a tiny house this big 12 feet wide by 36 long you definitely want to use a 50 ton house jack and that's what chris is doing right here he's lifting up underneath one of the skids to lift this house up just enough so he can pull those existing cinder blocks out, level that ground again, put those cinder blocks right back into place, and then lower that house down. Of course, that's not where we're going to finish because the ground uh, is so saturated that with every rain, this little tiny house was becoming unlevel. So once we completely level it up, Chris is then going to do the real permanent job of putting in place adjustable house jacks so that this would never happen again. With each season, this house can be adjusted accordingly. All right, so we've got everything uh, shimmed up underneath. We jacked up underneath the building there and we put blocks in and we have it level. We kept coming inside and checking our marks. We started out over here in the corner because that was the highest part of the whole building when we uh, got started. And as you can see, the level will just take you down the line here. The line that you see above is the line that we started out with. So we literally had to jack up this side of the building two and a half inches. So the nice thing about the level is you just leave the level in here and you just, you can jack it up ever so slightly until you reach your points here, not to the point to where you're flexing your building, but you're, you're just kind of gradually lifting it. The highest part that we had to lift was over here. It was five and a half. And so we're right at the line now. So we've got this building perfectly level. Uh, we're going to come back tomorrow and begin digging some square footings underneath and putting some screw jacks in to really help support this building. Okay, so let me explain something real quick because you're probably trying to figure out how in the world Chris got to the levels that he needed. So when he set that laser up right here, what he did was the laser is self-leveling. It's a DeWalt self-leveling laser. So it shot a green line all the way around this building. And then Chris went around and he marked where that green line was. In this case, from floor to green line, it was 54 and a half inches. Then he went around and there's other measurements, realized that this is the shortest distance from the floor to here. Then he went outside and he looked at the ground to see which would it be better to raise this one up or would it be better to lower this. And this particular corner, happens to only be a gap of about this big from the ground to the bottom of the building. So it's better to raise all the other levels up to meet this level than it would be to lower this. And the reason why is the lower you get to the ground, then the less opportunity you have to adjust the piers if they need adjusting or to add all the plumbing. So because this was 54 and a half inches from the base up, after he went around and saw where those were in order to get them to 54 and a half 
I'll show you what ended up happening. So let's go to the next corner. So again, original green line from ground up was 57 inches. So in order to get it to that 54 and a half inch mark, which would match up with that four corner there, he has to bring that green laser line down two and a half inches. So if you think about that, that would then put me at the 54 and a half inch mark, which means in order to bring that green line down, I actually have to go to this corner and jack it up two and a half inches. So as I jack that building up, that green line is in essence going down as the building's going up. And then at the 54 and a half inch line, now I've made this backside level. So again, 57 and a half inches minus 52 and a half inches gets me to, I'm sorry, 57 inches minus two and a half inches gets me to that 54 and a half. Now, if we go across to this one here, this was our most drastic. When Chris measured from the ground up to that laser line, this was at 60 inches. It was crazy different. So this whole building was not only like this, but it was also tilted. So in order to get it to that 54 and a half inch mark right here, he had to actually raise this corner five and a half inches. So again, once he was here, that's 54 and a half inches. So five and a half inches, he had to raise this building so that green line went down as he was raising it to that 54 and a half. And then finally, I'm not gonna show you that other corner, but that was three and a half inches off. And he had to raise that building three and a half inches to get it. So once it was all done, that green laser line from ground up was exactly 54 and a half inches all the way around. So that's how you determine it. See where your um, shortest point is from the ground to the laser? Go out and see if it's easier to raise that corner or is it easier to keep that corner where it's at and raise everything else accordingly. We chose to raise all the other three corners. We did not even touch that far corner. We chose to raise all the other three corners so that we would have enough room underneath to do all our plumbing and electrical to turn this uh, building into a tiny house for the client. Moving back outside, Chris is making form boards. They're two by six construction so that he has something to pour this concrete right into for these house jacks. So what he's doing here is he's leveling up an area for that form board. Ultimately, what he will have on the front side of this tiny house is four house jacks. And then on the back side of this tiny house is three house jacks. Each one of these house jacks adjust up to six inches of additional height. And they're all uh, have the ability to hold up to 10,000 pounds weight on each one of them. So this is definitely going to be a built to last structure once he's all finished. So now he's taking his jackhammer with the spade attachment and he's just kind of digging around in that dirt so that it doesn't make such hard work for him to hand dig that all out. You will see that once he's completely done with this square hole that he's digging, it is approximately 24 inches deep and that's just to ensure that he's gotten all the way down to the hard pan and avoided any of that soft soil that's causing this house to settle. The clients purchased this house about six months ago and had it moved onto their property and it was completely level but within only a few rains it, un it became unlevel and so we're trying to avoid that ever happening in the future. So we're back at our property right now and Chris is going and welding up some platforms you see right there and he's also welding up uh, seven squares that he's going to place one in each one of these form boards that he's doing. The purpose of that, of course, is to add stability to the concrete. Sometimes if you uh, pour concrete and there is no rebar in it, it has a tendency to crack over time. So if you give a little bit of extra rebar reinforcement into that concrete, it lasts much longer and has, uh, of course, less opportunity of cracking. So right here, you're seeing Chris 
uh, hammer in a couple pieces of rebar right into that hard pan so it's a perfect spot for him to lay down one of those grids that he had already made back at uh, the house. Of course, if you don't have a welder, tie wiring uh, some rebar together will work just fine. It gets you right, as long as you get that cage right into that uh, concrete, it really doesn't matter. Once it solidifies, it doesn't matter if you welded that or you tie wired it together. And here's our son, always willing to lend a helping hand. Uh, Chris used 80 pound sacks of Sackcrete is uh, the brand, and that contains a perfect mix of both rock, mortar, and cement for a really solid foundation. So they are mixing it a little on the wet side, and the purpose of that, of course, is to make sure that while it's being poured in there, there's less opportunity of air bubbles. Air bubbles, of course, are going to cause weakness in any of your cement. So you, you want to try to avoid that. So a wetter mix is always going to be a best option for something like this. Of course, it will take a little bit longer to fully cure. So we do have to have a little bit of patience, let these completely set up, which will take a few days before we take those form boards off. And then we let it set for another couple days uh, to fully cure before we put weight on those with house jacks. So Chris, of course, is going to go around and he's going to repeat this process six more times. I brought the camera in just a little bit closer so you can see just exactly what that looks like. Those were those platforms that Chris had welded back at home. He pushed that right into the top after he had completely leveled off the top surface so that it has a chance to solidify. And that is what that house jack will eventually be sitting on once it is fully cured and then uh, secured to the bottom of that tiny house so that as the season progresses and the ground might become a little bit soft, that's going to hold the house up. And if ever it becomes unlevel at all, he's going to go ahead and just twist that house jack to bring that house right back to level. But I'm guessing that with this completed, this will be a perfect permanent job and the house jack won't have much twisting at all that's needed in order to keep this entire project nice and level and ready for the final move in of the guest. He is taking the form boards off now so that you can see just exactly what this looks like. I believe he let it set for about three days before these form boards came off. So as you can see, this is a nice solid foundation that he can put that house jack right on top of and uh, just secure this entire tiny house so that regardless of the weight, it is built to last. All right, so we're at the final stage now where we're going to go ahead and install the screw jack onto our footing here that we've placed these piers. They're nice and solid, nice, the concrete's nice and cured, um, and it turned out really nice. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it all turned out. We've got seven piers that we put underneath this building. And so we're just gonna place these. We leveled these up when we installed them, uh, these steel plates. And so basically, you're just gonna install this guy in there, screw it up firm. There's four bolt holes here. You could screw that to it. And then they give you a bar that goes through the hole here where you can tighten it up or you could put a cheater bar in there if it was a little bit too tight for you to be able, be able to actually turn it. But this plate here just kind of spins on there and you'll adjust it to where you need it to be. And actually, you back that off, center it over the plate here. Make sure it's where you want it. And then run some lags in there. So the last thing here is of course to pre-drill each one of those four holes and run about two and a half inch lags right up through the top plate of that and uh, go around six more times and you're pretty much done. And there you go folks, all the jacks are in. We got two here, two on the other side and there's a row in the back. These are really nice jacks. You just come out and you stick this little 
bar in there and you can tighten them up if, if they if this thing was to settle down but this isn't going anywhere this building these these uh, uh, footings and piers that we put in here they're nice and solid um, a little bit bigger than probably what we needed but I like to go a little overboard on certain things and uh, so anyhow it turned out really good so thank you for watching you can do it and stay tuned for our next video